Okay, so technique part one for today. Uh, keeping in mind that this week is back attacks. I'm gonna cut a lot of verbiage out today because most of us, minus maybe one player, have seen all these attacks before. So Adrian, it's gonna be easier to demonstrate. Remember, he's riding the invisible motorcycle, I'm behind him. This isn't a very realistic position in actual live jujitsu. Very rarely what I have his back with the two hooks and the seat belt. Normally we'd be on the side over here or he'd be up on top of me or something. But how we're gonna fasten our hands are still the same. So for demo purposes, He's riding the motorcycle, I'm hanging behind him, right? Like, uh, was that Dumb and Dumber? Okay, so one thing I wanna uh, pay attention to real quick. This is my seatbelt. There's a right way to do the seatbelt and there's a wrong way to do the seatbelt. I need to protect my choking hand. The choking hand is almost always gonna be the arm that's over the shoulder, okay? So if it was Nogi, this is the arm that attacks the throat to go to my short choke or my full rear naked. It's very similar in the gi. I wanna protect my top hand. Why? Because. If I have the hand on top, on top, the first hand he goes to fight is the top hand when he does, now I've got no chokes. So when I'm running a seatbelt, my choking arm is always the protected hand. Now when he comes up to peel this top hand, I still have the collar to choke with. So try to keep that in mind when we're running all these drills today. My top hand is on the bottom, if that makes sense. When I'm in my seatbelt, I'm always trying to, and if you guys ever find yourself doing it wrong before they get you, switch, protect the top hand. Very simple, our first one is going to be the necktie, but we're gonna put a different twist on it today. I take my hand that's here, I open the lapel, I basically make a C or an L, I fit my thumb in the collar. The taller on the collar I get, look, this is already tighter. If I'm down here, there's a lot of play in the collar. So, I go from the good seatbelt, I open, feet as deep as I can, and once I decide to get this grip, this is a death grip. There's a couple death grips, nickname, a couple death grips in gi. When I get these dominant grips, He's at a huge disadvantage. So I'm in the good seatbelt. I open, feed deep, get a good grip. Now, when I let go of this, I like to put my thumb on the sternum and I reach all the way across to find the second lapel. I make a good grip. Now this is weird. Everybody wants to pull sideways. That is the wrong way to do this. My bottom hand is an anchor. It goes down. It takes the slack out of the jacket. See it right here? See that slack disappearing? Feed, find, anchor, and now it's not about taking my hand out here, it's about my elbow disappearing behind his back, like I'm drawing the, the throat slitter, okay? So I'm here, open, feed, find. Anchor to take the slack out and watch my elbow. It doesn't travel well, this way, it goes behind his shoulders, I tighten the lapel, and I get my choke. I'm cutting down both carotid arteries. So again, normal necktie is like this. One, two, three, four, okay. We're gonna do this, every other one, you're gonna do a standard necktie. One, I'm gonna repeat. The second time, before I start to pull, I'm gonna to lean to the side so I'm looking in his ear. I'm gonna put one foot across and take my hooks out. This foot is gonna go over his shoulder like a bow and arrow. Now I'm pushing down with my leg as I start to strangle. So we have our standard necktie, where I keep the hooks. Sometimes I can't finish this, they're tough. One. Two, I'm driving my leg down and I'm bringing my elbow to the mat. And I'm looking to choke, okay? Some people call this a supercharged necktie. You can call it whatever you want. We're just throwing the leg over the shoulder for additional pressure. If you have questions, I will be around. Ready, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, there's no real name for this, but realistically, this is very similar to doing an Ezekiel from the back. So before I commit my hooks, let's just talk about some of the body mechanics. Here I am here. Now, an Ezekiel from the front, I've got to control the chin, loop my hand behind. For those of you guys that were here last week, I've hooked my own grip. Remember, my hands can go inside of my grips, but I can't go inside of his, either of his cuffs on his pants or here. But I can grab mine anytime I want to. So some of you guys here, we use this term like the rodeo wave. Those chicks go around, they wave like this. So as I'm in here, what I want to do is I want to do the same thing, kind of like an Ezekiel. I'm going to get my four fingers. Some people do it two, some people do it three. I would suggest four. I get, I get a hook grip. Now again, I can't have my uh, sleeve down by like the bumps in my wrist. So I want it at least the halfway point. Some of you guys with longer arms, or you're going against a bigger torso opponent, you might have to be more than halfway. You may have to be more down by the elbow. What we don't want to be is by the wrist, okay? Again, I'm going to use the blade of my forearm to put pressure on his carotid artery. So as I'm in here, same thing, protecting the top hand. So last time we open, fed, fed, pull, choke. This is kind of similar, except for now I don't even need to play with his lapel. Sometimes I can't get to lapel. Sometimes 
the belt's wide open, and I can't find the lapel over here. So we need to be able to use our own. So I'm going to basically make my four-finger hook grip, do the little rodeo wave to get to where I need to get to. Now, if I am plated perfectly behind him on this, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to do. So just like last time, I couldn't finish this. So what I have to do, I have to uncommit and move to the side. See how I'm looking to the side of him now? And then I can throw that leg over, and I can push my leg down and strangle. This is very similar, except for now I don't have his lapels. I'm here. I start setting this up. Now watch, it's like a rear naked choke. I'm gonna bring my arm around behind his head. You see how I'm already starting to get tight on his artery? I wanna drop my hand low and tight. Now I disconnect my hooks and cut the angle so I can at least look Adrian in the eyes. Now it's a matter of pulling this elbow down while I'm shooting this hand across, and I'm looking to create cross tension. So if I try this, I like to call this a rear naked Ezekiel. We gotta call it something. If I stay straight behind him, I'm gonna be putting pressure on his spine. I wanna cut the blood flow down. So again, I set up my Ezekiel. I get my arm in place. I come behind the head, get it low. Don't squeeze his skull, I need to be on his neck. Now that I have I'm in place, now I disconnect my feet. Come to the side, I sit him back. I keep my hand low. This is chopping into one side of his neck. This is pulling into the other, and I start to flex and squeeze and apply pressure. Most of the pressure is gonna be on this side of his throat. It looks like the chopping action, this doesn't do much to his artery. It's the side that I have my grip on. So again, here, here, when I've got it set up, I can even lean him back. I gotta have a good grip because now I'm gonna start to put pressure and cut his artery down, okay? Call this the rear naked Ezekiel. That's been my nickname for this for like the last 23 years. So if you guys have any questions, I'll be around. Question? What keeps him just from spinning into you right there? What control do you have on his legs or whatever to keep him uh, spinning? This is gonna keep, as he turns, he's turning into the choke, he's starting to expose more of a windpipe. But some people will turn in without getting too far ahead of time. If he turns in so much where I lose this, I transition right to Juju Gatame or Triangle. Let's, let's run the snare at one time just for a second. Let's say something goes bad, right? No moves 100%. I come in here, rodeo wave. I come here. He starts to turn into me. Push the head away and go to my arm. What if he starts to sit up? I'm into my triangles. From my triangle, back into Marmar. Bar. The Marmars have wrist locks. So just the game gets deeper. There's more stuff that comes from there. We're ready for that. I'll show you guys those transitions. Sounds good? Any questions? I'll be around. Ready? One, two, three. Good. Technique part three. Probably the last one of the day. Again, here I am. Boom. Boom. Hooks. Seatbelt with the correct hand being hidden. Same exact transfer we did the first time for part one. Part one was open, feed deep, get a good grip. Now, the reason I like to teach specifically 3D you guys the first couple times through the curriculum, I cannot always get my hand out to do like short chokes or full rear naked chokes. A lot of times this player, when the, once I get this grip, knows that if I can get this out, I've got additional problems. So sometimes they start to like chicken wing down and I can't pull my hand out. This is why, and I'll finish my sentence. This is why I like to run some stuff with my underhook and some stuff with my choking arm. Open, feed, now, even if I can't extract my arm, I can pick up this. I can get to the side, hit this, okay? Or, let's say for whatever reason, like Jeremy and Trent, big dudes, they were over here. Jeremy couldn't even get his hand behind Trent's head because he's such a big dude. I can't get this, I can come right back to my control positions. I didn't lose anything. Once I get over the shoulders, even if I'm trying to choke, he can start to slip away and start to use his corkscrew. So, this is the, seri the third series. Traditionally, it's gonna be here. We have our necktie. If that doesn't work, I can palm the skull, throw the elbow high. This is kata hajime, also known as the coat hanger choke. Elbow comes back, I push the head forward, and I strangle. We're gonna skip that one today, but what my point is, is this hand the whole time stays under hook. I never pummel this hand out for right now. So we have necktie, coat hanger, Ezekiel, or my favorite, open, Feed. Now I drop straight down. I grab the outside seven grip. I do not uncommit my hooks until I have both grips. Now, just like we did earlier, I hike this over. As I bring Adrian's head back towards the mat, I don't want to lean back and throw the leg over. Why? Because Adrian reaches <coughs> up and grabs my elbow, pulls it over, and now he's out of the choke and he learns for me. So this is why when we hit this bow and arrow, guys, I want to keep my chest stuck to his shoulder. So bow and arrow. Grip. Reach down, 
grab the seven, get a good grip. Now I hike my foot over and I like to hook my foot. And as I lean, same thing, see how my chest is on the shoulder? I'm starting to dip my dancing partner. I bring the leg over just like we did technique part one. If I can, this is fine. Some people will cross their feet. If I can get to Jesus' feet like they're praying, that's even better. Now, why is it called the bow and arrow? I'm pulling, pulling, and kicking. My leg is the arrow, his body is the bow. Boom, boom. So a couple times smooth. Get your grips, get to the side, dip him, and strangle. One, two, three. Again. One, two, switch the feet, dip him, stay tight, leg over the top, kick, pull. Straight. Those of you guys advanced players, you want to know what comes next. And if you're here today, play it, but don't make this the main point. The bow ever goes bad, I go right into my arm bar. Boom, boom, boom. He reaches back and he pulls it. Go ahead, reach back, hold the elbow. Hook the arm, climb up, straight into the arm bar. After you guys do, let's put it this way. I'll put six minutes on the clock for this last one. Go a couple times each. Only in like the last 90 seconds, go bow and arrow to arm bar if you please. Ready? One, two, three.